one. Uh, I would just wait a minute to start the session. I I cannot hear you. Hello, I, I, it's okay. Oh. I'm just waiting one minute, and uh, uh -oh. I believe we okay. can start now. Okay. 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 So um, I would like just to introduce you, and uh, so thank you very much again, Professor Dan Feng Hong, uh, which is going to talk about uh, deep learning for remote sense image analysis, and. Uh, Dr. Dan Feng is currently a professor with the King Laboratory of uh, Com Computational Optical Imaging Technology at the Chinese Academy of Science. And he's currently also an associate editor of IEEE Transactions on Geosciences and Remote Sensing. And uh, he's among the top 2% a scientist according to a rank by Stanford University. And he has been a research scientist and led a working group in spectrovision at the German Aerospace Center, DOR. And uh, he's also worked as a junk scientist with the Gypsa Lab at the Grenoble Institute of Technology. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Dunfeng. So the room is yours. And, uh, so thank you. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so now I will share my uh, screen and uh, I'll start my presentation. Okay. Uh, so I will. Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. It's my great honor to give a talk today in this well known international conference on machine version and image processing. I'm Dan Feng Hong from the K Lab of Digital Earth Science, Aerospace Information Research Institute, Chinese Academic of Sciences in Beijing of China. The title of my talk is Deep Learning for Remote Sensing Image Analysis. Oh, there are five parts in this talk. They are research background, deep learning for spectral mixing, Deep learning for image fusion, deep learning for image classification, and the conclusion and the outlook. We will first start to introduce the research background in terms of imaging principle in remote sensing. Remote sensing is an important means of information acquisition in a contactless fashion, technically speaking. It fills into active remote sensing, emitting the energy or signal by spacecraft or aircraft, and receiving the response reflected from the objects by the sensor similarly installed in spacecraft or aircraft, and the passive remote sensing which directly detects the radiations from the sunlight reflection on the surface of the Earth. As a promising category of passive remote sensing, hyperspectral imaging assembles the two techniques of spectroscopy and digital photography in a single system. The resulting product is a 3D cube by simultaneously scanning the 2D image play in spectrally continuous bands. The hyperspectral image holds a complex spectrum, which means that the hundreds of narrow wavelength bands are collected at each pixel across the electromagnetic spectrum, for example, from 400 to 2500 nanometers. The spaceborne hyperspectral satellites have entered into a period of rapid growth. They all make great progress in either satellite launching techniques or image related devices. Very recently, 
There are also two advanced hyperspectral imaging programs in Germany, for example, DESIS and MF. And in China, for example, the Dolphin 5, Ziyuan, Jilin, etc. We are expecting to use them for contributing to the next generation Earth observation machines. These hyperspectral products would enable us to enhance our understanding, possibilities, and capabilities in a wide range of, of applications, for example, mineral mapping, urban planning, precious farming, water quality assessment, mass exploration, concealed target detection, etc. Despite the potential and uh, significance of hyperspectral images in various applications, there are still several crucial issues that need to be sufficiently considered in the high level data analysis. There have been a lot of classic handcrafted feature extraction methods in the past decades, for example, the LVP. Um, descriptor, bag of words model, shift descriptor, spectral signature extraction, and so on. However, with the rapidly increasing number of different remote sensing modalities, there will be a big gap between the complete completeness of handcrafted features and the, and the rich information of remote sensing images. This leads to insufficient representations using handcrafted features for massive remote sensing data. Therefore, more powerful feature representations and learning framework should be used. Different from traditional handcrafted feature extraction approaches, deep learning methods going to its powerful learning ability in extracting features are capable of learning multi-level feature representations, for example, low level, middle level, and high level in a progressive way. As a result, deep learning based uh, automatic feature extraction will be a good and uh, visible solution for intelligent remote sensing data analysis. In the remote sensing image analysis, there are some potential version tasks. For example, image restoration, dimensionality reduction, data fusion and enhancement, spectrum mixing, and image classification, etc. In our this talk, we will unfold them around three topics. For example, the spectrum mixing, the image fusion, and the image classification using deep learning techniques. Okay, so we will go for the second part, uh, deep learning for spectral and mixing. And uh, due to the mid-level ground sampling distance and the effects of various spectral variabilities in hyperspectral imaging, most pixels of the hyperspectral image are in the form of complex mixture. Accordingly, there mixed uh, pixels bring us the challenges in robust spectral mixing against uh, spectral variability. The existence of mixed pixels and the complex spectral variability greatly limited the ability of fun feature classification tasks. Therefore, how to effectively and robustly decompose the mixed pixels in hyperspectral images and design an accurate spectral inversion algorithms has become our main concern. Linear mixing assumption is generally suitable for large scale and homogeneous distribution sense. This is usually an ideal case but in practical, due to uh, the existence of physical interactions between multiple materials in imaging, 
the pixels in hyperspectral image are in a linear way. So for example, uh, intimate mixing and multi-layered mixing. The formal one is a good fit for small scale, high density sin. For example, dessert and, min and mineral. But uh, for the later one, it's usually more suitable for the complex uh, geometry and uh, hierarchical scene. For example, the vegetation or city uh, scenes. Okay, here we first simply review the classical linear mixing model. Uh, given a hyperspectral image, the linear mixing model can separate it into the impure and members and its corresponding percentage are termed as dependencies. Due to the existence of spectral variability, for example, scaling factors are caused uh, by illumination and uh, topography change, complex noise from environment condition and sensors, physically and chemically atmospheric effects, as well as the nonlinear mixing, including intimate or multi layered mixing. The linear model, the linear mix model, usually fails to estimate the balances accurately. One main reason for this case is that their spectral variabilities has been absorbed by these estimated balances. Considering the above situation, two specific issues and challenges need to be addressed. One is uh, collinearity and another is uh, model selection. Regarding um, this collinearity, it usually leads to a high uh, correlation or dependence between members and the virtual members. Consequently, the unmixing accuracy is reduced. The result is unstable and sensitive to, to the noises. Regarding the model selection, um, it's well known that different nonlinear mixed models lead to different unmixing results. In order to perform an adaptive unmixing beyond different senses, different sensor data, the data-driven nonlinear mixing method is most suitable for solving unknown sense. Deep learning is uh, characterized by powerful feature learning ability. And I think which is more uh, applicable to handling nonlinear and spectral variability issues in the process of uh, mixing. For these problems, we provide uh, the first solution and, and we propose an, a member guided uh, mixing network for uh, self supervised hyperspectral mixing. We call this method is EGU net. Um, this EGU net consists of two sub networks a member guided mixing network and a CN based reconstruction network. As the first sub network aims to learn the mapping between the candidate and the members and the corresponding abundances. The candidates and the members here can be extracted by the VCA algorithm, which can be explained as uh, and the pursuit of uh, pure pixels without mixed pixels in hyperspectral images. By sharing the network weight, uh, the mapping duration between the candidate and the members and the their balances can be uh, well uh, transformed to the CN based reconstruction network in order to obtain more accurate abundance and estimate results. Uh, in this experimental part, uh, the two hyperspectral data sites are used for evaluating the unmixing performance. And uh, then the two data sites include four and five land cover categories, respectively. Several current state-of-the-art uh, comparison methods are selected 
including traditional geometric statistics methods and some deep learning methods. It can be seen that our methods can obtain more accurate abundance results compared to other competitors. And the abundance map is more approaching to the branches. In the experimental evaluation, we use a simple and effective way to generate the abundance controls. Firstly, the high resolution hyperspectral images are simulated by, by ESTES. This is a toolbox or Gaussian uh, downsampling uh, uh, strategy to obtain low resolution hyperspectral images. Next, uh, the classification results of high resolution hyperspectral images are obtained. Then the abundance reference maps are obtained according to uh, the downsampling rate and the classification map. Finally, the reference and the members can be also obtained by averaging spectral signatures belonging to uh, each category. Uh, and we give a visual comparison in terms of bandwidth estimation using different and uh, mixing algorithms. It's clean to see that our proposed EGU net uh, for both pixel wise and uh, spatial spectral wise versions shows the effectiveness of the proposed method. Similarly, we also presented the quantitative evaluation on the NMAP data. Several indices show that our method performs more accurate and mixing results. And it should be noticed that the codes and the data of this uh, uh, proposed method are also available openly and friendly, which can be downloaded from uh, my GitHub homepage, as shown here. Our second solution for spectrum mixing is a cycle consistency and mixing network. At, at present, most of deep learning based on mixing methods only consider the consistency of statistical information of hyperspectral data. That is paying more attention to reconstruction errors and ignore the geometric structure information of the data, leading to the loss of detailed information of ground objects in the process of unmixing. Therefore, in order to effectively improve the unmixing performance of the network, we introduce the perceptual loss to capture the details of hyperspectral images. For the deep learning based uh, mixing methods, the, uh, the abundance results can be expanded as the uh, high dimensional features learned from the network. For that, we design the structure of cascade to auto-encode the networks and introduce the abundance consistency obtained from the two autoencoder networks in order to match the perceptual loss so as to restrict the unmixing network by shrinking the solution space. At the same time, in order to better train the two autoencoder networks, two reconstruction and arrows are introduced to train the whole network in an unsupervised way. The final cycle consistency um, constraint is generated by reconstructing the error and abundance consistency. In the experimental part, Washington DC and the Cuprite have a spectral data sites are used for evaluating the mixing performance. And the two data sites uh, include five and uh, 12 land cover categories, respectively. And we will uh, test uh, the performance of all our algorithms in, in the two data sites. Uh, and we visualize the abundances of attended by different uh, mixing methods, as can be seen from the figure. Uh, our, our methods can preserve more detailed information 
compared to that only use single autoencoder based uh, unmixing network. For example, the CN autoencoder unmixing and uh, DA uh, EU algorithm, for, for, for instance. In the, in the quantitative accuracy evaluation, our method can also get better at mixing results. We can see uh, the specific index. And uh, the codes and the data size can be also obtained from, from my homepage. Yeah, you can download uh, the codes and data size for your own data to test uh, the mix performance. Well, finally, in the Cupra data, our method can separate spectral signatures uh, that is uh, the pure members of different many rules. Well, we can see these curves and the estimated uh, uh, curves are more approaching to the new ones. Our third solution for the spectral mixing task is to use multimodal remote sensing data to break the performance bottleneck of only using hyperspectral images for unmixing. And it's well known that um, it is difficult to accurately describe the types of features with spectral similarity by relying solely on hyperspectral data for mixed pixel decomposition. For example, for urban areas with complex features, the spectral uh, signatures of different types of vegetation have um, certain similarities. Therefore, it's necessary to find and use more data information to help hyperspectral images to obtain better and mixing results of uh, mixed pixels. Here we consider the LiDAR data and use its potential and height information to help hyperspectral data are mixing. The specific method is to embed the height information extracted from the LiDAR data into the autoencoder based mixing network in an SB based attention fashion in order to better guide the unmixing process more accurately. So experimental data include Marvel data and Houston data, and also including five and four feature categories respectively. And the two index are used to evaluate the results of extracted abundances and, uh, and the members. Uh, for example, the ARMSE and ESAD. We show the abundance uh, estimation results on Marvel data. There are some feature classes with similar spectral characteristics in this data set. Uh, for example, uh, the roof and, uh, and, and asphalt, grass and the tree overall. It can be seen from the figure that the proposed uh, MoonNet method can better separate different feature classes. Here is the uh, extracted and member comparison and uh, the corresponding quantitative accuracy results. It can be seen that our methods can obtain better uh, member and abundance estimation results. And similarly, here is the Houston result from the visual evaluation. Uh, and from the quantitative results, although our method is not always the best, with respect to the member estimation results for each class, the overall accuracy is the best, which can prove the effectiveness of our method to a, a great extent. Okay, then we will go for the topic of deep learning for uh, image fusion. There is a trade-off between spatial and spectral resolutions of remote sensing images. 
for example, hyperspectral and multispectral images. In order to perform the fine classification or recognition of ground objects, the high spatial and high spectral resolution remote sensing images are needed. Here we take a Sentinel-2 multispectral satellite data and NMAP hyperspectral data as an example. They have different spatial resolution and uh, spectral sampling. A feasible way to improve the quality of hyperspectral image is hyperspectral image super resolution. As we know, the multispectral image has a high spatial resolution and the hyperspectral image has a high spectral resolution. In order to get a final product with high spatial and high spectral resolutions, a linear mixed model as a backbone is used for image fusion from a spectral mixing perspective. Roughly speaking, multispectral and hyperspectral images are mixed into end members and the corresponding bandages. In this process, two functions, for example, the point spread function and the spectral response function are used to downsample the spatial and the spectral resolutions of multispectral and hyperspectral images respectively. However, there is a crucial problem that we need to concern. That is, the two functions are usually unknown in practical applications. Uh, for this problem, we propose a solution by adaptively learning the two functions in a two-stream spectral and mixing network. The two subnetworks are two convolution-based autoencoders where the members of high spectral resolution are generated and uh, the abundances are of high spatial resolution are generated as well. Then our final product can be naturally obtained. Based on it, we improved this framework by designing a consistency model and uh, a cross attention model. This um, consistency model forms a consistency representation between low dimensional light image, low resolution hyperspectral image, high resolution multispectral image, and our final a product with high spatial and spectral resolutions. And the cross attention model performs the attention in a crossway to enhance the spatial and the spectral information before the final fusion. With two data sets, that is Pavia University and the chicken seed data sites, we visualize the fusion based super resolution results with our method in comparison with other state-of-the-art methods. For more details, our coconut shows basically the best performance in all index on three different data sets. It should be noticed that also as a supervised method, MF an MHF net beats our method in several results. Our Kuka net is a, a fully unsupervised method. Similarly, we share our course in, in GitHub homepage. We can download the course and the data size from this given link. Uh, in order to further improve the fusion performance, we consider a general but a challenging problem such as when the uh, multispectral and hyperspectral images are not strictly registered for this problem, we propose a non rigidly situation hyperspectral and multispectral fusion network. In the fusion process, we also consider the image re registration by additionally learning a displacement field in an end-to-end -end fashion 
here we uh, illustrate the whole framework. We can see um, this for um, uh, this figure for more details. And uh, in this slide, we take the Pavia University data site as an example to simulate the land registration data. Uh, more specifically, we need to uh, meet the Gaussian distribution in, uh, in order to generate the displacement field and also use the uh, as a point uh, a split function to generate the low resolution uh, hyperspectral images and uh, uh, use the spectral response function uh, of Landsat 8 to generate uh, the high resolution uh, multi spectral images. Uh, they can be used for the following uh, experiment part. And we here show the visual difference images between the estimated field images obtained by different algorithms uh, and the ground truth images. Uh, we can obviously see that the errors generated by our method are very small uh, compared to, to others, showing the, the superiority of our proposed uh, network for image fusion. And we also made a, um, a comparison in the case of different deformations. Uh, for example, the real registration, one pixel, two pixel, three pixel, uh, etc. Uh, we can see that the proposed methods uh, can always achieve more stable results and uh, uh, different deformations. And the final given topic is deep learning for uh, image classification. Uh, and in this topic, we mainly introduce two kinds of remote sensing image classification tasks. One is uh, um, a single modality uh, image class classification, for example, the hyperspectral image classification. And another is uh, the multimodal uh, remote sensing image classification. As we know, the hyperspectral image is the spectrally redundant, which leads to the high coupling or correlation between the neighboring spectral depths. This would further drive the problems of high storage and the computational cost, as well as hard to extract the enough and the effective information. Therefore, reducing the spectral redundancy and meanwhile improving or preserving the spectral discrimination ability, as well as mining um, the informative uh, features are our primary concerns. And for this purpose, we provide a new solution based on a graph convolutional neural networks for hyperspectral image classification. We first simply introduce and compare the advantages and the disadvantages between the, the convolutional neural network and the graph convolutional neural networks. Uh, for example, in CN, is, uh, its advantages is to uh, capture locally spatial information and uh, uh, and the mean well reduced spectral redundancy. On the contrary, is to disadvantages is to ignore um, the middle distance or long distance relation between samples, and also the CN is hard to capture. Uh, for example, the global information. Uh, moreover, CN is to a great extent sensitive to spectral variabilities in uh, cross scene classification tasks, for example. Uh, well, for, for the GCN, uh, means graph convolution network, its advantage is to consider pixel level and the graph structure of samples to capture a middle or long spatial information and also extract globally um, contextual information. But uh, its disadvantage is also obvious 
uh, that is training the other network in the full batch fashion. It's very easy to lead to the poor flexibility. Next, uh, the GCN needs to uh, compute the large scale uh, graph computation leading to the highly expensive cost in computational complexity. And finally, the traditional GCN usually fails to uh, perform the out of sample uh, without retraining the networks. For these problems, we propose uh, a novel uh, called Mini GCN for hyperspectral image classification. Uh, as the name suggests, we were able to train the, uh, this GCN on a downsampled uh, graph in a mini batch fashion. Uh, this mini GCN is a, a fully supervised the network. That means only uh, by by using the training samples for training networks. Uh, furthermore, uh, the learned network can be directly used for prediction on the out of sample without the need for retraining the networks. Um, con <coughs> considering the uh, advantages of CN and GCN, uh, such as the locally spatial information extraction uh, using um, CNN and uh, the, the topological structure uh, feature extraction between the samples uh, by using the GCN. It's naturally uh, for us to combine them together for, uh, for the uh, remote sensing image classification task. For that, we further propose an end-to-end -end fusion network uh, we, we call it uh, the full net uh, for hyperspectral image classification. And, uh, and the, the fusion uh, uh, strategies are quite simple. We can, we can see that uh, uh, including the only uh, additive and uh, element wells multiplication and the, the stacked fusion. Uh, the two commonly used hyperspectral data, such as uh, Indian Pi data and uh, Pavia University data, are used to evaluate the classification performance. And the specific information regarding uh, these two data sets is listed here. You can see the details uh, for these two data sets. Okay, of course, you can find more the details. Uh, um, about this two data set and also the training and the testing uh, the distributions um, in our paper. And in this slides, we visually compared our mini GCN as well as the full net with, uh, uh, with other state of the art deep learning uh, methods in the hyperspectral image classification task. We can see clearly uh, uh, from the figure that the classification uh, uh, obtained by our methods, for example, the mini GCN and, uh, and our full nets uh, with the different fusion um, strategies. We can see that our method is, uh, is smaller. I mean, the classification map obtained by our method is uh, is smaller than uh, than that obtained by by the compared classical uh, with the network um, architectures, for example, the CN or uh, or GCN, for example. Uh, similarly, we made a quantitative comparison in terms of. Uh, for example, like our, our accuracy, average accuracy, and uh, CAPA coefficient. And uh, we can also uh, make a parameter sensitive analysis about this uh, graph construction in, uh, in the graph co uh, convolution, convolutional networks uh, with uh, uh, two important parameters, for example, like the K and the sigma.
Uh, and our uh, second solution is to develop a, a transformer-based uh, hyperspectral image classification, uh, a new framework. Mm, as we know, the, uh, the CNN can capture the locally spatial information, but uh, fuse to model uh, the, the sequence information, for example, the spectral signatures in hyperspectral images. And also, the, the, the RNA can capture the sequence information of spectral signatures. Uh, it turns to, um, to cause information redundancy and the model crash, further leading to the high storage and the computational cost. <clears throat> More important uh, is that the, uh, the RN um, cannot be performed in, in parallel. And here we list some, uh, uh, some, some basic network architectures. And based on the other reasons mentioned above, we propose a transformer-based network architecture for hyperspectral image classification. Uh, we we named this method as the spectral former. Uh, unlike uh, the classic transformer, our method improves in two aspects. One, one is that we change the network input to consider the enabling spectral information. And another is to develop a, a cross layer adaptive fusion model to reduce the information loss. Uh, more specific, we design a group-wise spectra and banding model whose aim is to locally group the spectral signatures by spectral sampling with, uh, with, with partial overlapping, as shown in, uh, in, in the figure. And, uh, and another cross-layer adaptive fusion model is to reduce the information loss as much as possible uh, due to the layer by layer transmission. Moreover, the fusion can be performed by adaptively lear learning the parameters in networks to improve the fusion quality of features. Visually, we made a comparison in the feature maps obtained with cross layer adaptive fusion model and without it. Uh, correspondingly, we made a, an ablation analysis to show the effectiveness of improve, uh, the, uh, uh, of improve the different modules and uh, the parameters. And for example, the, the, number, the, the number of the uh, the neighboring spectral bands. Uh, in the uh, qualitative, uh, in the qualitative and the quantitative comparison, our proposed uh, spectral formulas shows uh, the best results. Uh, we can see the details. Uh, similarly, the codes are data are uh, also openly available, uh, you, and you can also find it. Uh, in my GitHub homepage. Our third solution is to solve this uh, classification challenge by using multimodal remote sensing data. Due to uh, imaging uh, characteristics and uh, hardware design, signal uh, uh, multimodal uh, data inevitably meets the uh, performance uh, botnet. Uh, it's naturally to uh, motivate us uh, to use multimodal uh, data for remote sensing image classification. Uh, we first start to introduce the, uh, the two concepts, multimodal uh, feature learning and cross-modal feature learning with application to the remote sensing image classification. And they have the same training phase uh, we can see it from the figures, uh, both including uh, feature extractor and the feature fusion. And the main difference uh, lines in that one modality is offset. 
in cross model learning during the test uh, test phase. And in other words, uh, only uh, only part modalities can be found can be found and used as input in the test phase. And in this solution, we propose a general uh, multimodal deep learning framework for remote sensing image classification, uh, MDLRS for short. To our best knowledge, this is the first uh, general uh, multimodal deep learning framework for remote sensing image classification, which is not only uh, applicable to pixel-wise classification, but also patch-wise classification. In addition, the MDRS is suitable for different types of modalities, for example, a homogeneous data or heterogeneous data. It can be also extended to more than um, three modalities. And uh, in this framework, uh, feature fusion mo model is a key part. We summarize the several basic and the popular fusion uh, strategies, for example, uh, early fusion, uh, model, uh, uh, middle fusion, the later fusion, as well as um, to our proposed fusion methods, the encoder, decoder fusion, and the cross fusion. Here we give the network configuration and visualize the situation of, of neural activation of two uh, heterogeneous modality fusion. When using different fusion um, strategies, we can see that the proposed uh, the cross fusion has a very high response for different modalities, showing a more compact uh, a fusion result. Okay, the uh, the pixel wise classification maps are given as shown in this figure. We can see. Uh, the, uh, the different types of classification tasks, the multi model learning, and also cross, -mo cross model learning. Well, similarly, the patch wise classification maps are given as well in terms of multi model and cross model cases. Uh, and, and in detail, the quantity results show that our proposed fusion strategies are very effective, not only for um, the multimodal learning case, but also for cross-modal learning, obviously. And uh, our final solution is uh, uh, multimodal GAN for remote sensing image segmentation. We first use a VGG-like feature extraction uh, the network in our method, and then a self guide model is proposed to extract uh, robust feature representations. And the next, a mutual guide module is um, designed for a more compact fusion. And the loss function of our method consists of three parts reconstruction, loss. Gun loss and, uh, and, uh, and, and regularization loss. As we know, different from natural images, there are only several remote sensing images for training uh, the networks. In order to better uh, train the segmentation network, we propose um, a progressive patch wise training strategy as shown in this figure. And, and, and we can see uh, from the table that our method has an acceptable parameter size uh, and also a high segmentation accuracy compared to uh, the other uh, uh, the training strategies. And we train our network in a, a, a Pavia University, uh, but uh, testing in another, uh, in another image called the Pavia City Center. Uh, and, uh, and, and we used the three uh, as a segmentation evaluation index 
Uh, for example, the our, our accuracy mean F1 value mean IOU, for example. And uh, this uh, quantitative uh, uh, results shows uh, the performance of our algorithm is superior to that of and the other competitors, including uh, the deep learning, uh, the, the deep learning methods, also the non deep learning methods. Uh, here shows the visual uh, segmentation maps of um, different algorithms, as can be seen from the figures. Uh, the result of our methods is more approaching uh, to the ground truth. Yeah, we can we can clearly see that. Yeah, uh, particularly we can see this water. Yeah, it's obvious. And we finally made a conclusion and uh, outlook. Uh, okay, around remote sensing image analysis, we propose a series of state of the art deep learning algorithms. And, uh, and they cover three uh, aspects. For example, the spectrum mixing, image fusion, and image classification. And their codes and data are basically available openly and freely, and can be downloaded uh, from my GitHub homepage. Yeah, you, you, and you are welcome uh, to go for my GitHub homepage for more. And you can also scan this uh, um, um, this QR code to get this link. Okay, so that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. So thank you, Professor Dunfang. Could you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so we have time for uh, uh, some questions. Uh, I will start. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Professor Dunfang, uh, you have shown uh, a bunch of uh, works. And uh, thank you for for this. Uh, but uh, I wonder to hear from you about uh, uh, what is your vision about the main problems, the main challenges at this time uh, in, in the remote sensing, uh, computer vision, image analysis. Could you talk a bit about this? Uh, so you mean the, uh, the main challenges? Uh, or and yeah, for, uh, because uh, uh, deep learning have uh, we have a kind of revolution in deep, in remote sensing because uh, ten years ago it was very difficult to uh, to to obtain good representations for remote sensing data because it's very different from uh, RGB images and now with deep learning when you uh, learn from data it seems uh, most of the problems we had, we have no more in, in remote sensing. So um, what we need to do now in this research area, in your opinion? OK, so uh, okay, thank you very much um, for your questions. And, uh, and I think the, uh, the main factor is that uh, for the remote sensing uh, data uh, um, in the past, uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, a little bit hard to obtain uh, remote sensing data for uh, for the research. I mean, uh, the openly or friendly, uh, and also uh, labeling uh, for remote sensing images is quite hard uh, to do that um, since uh, um, uh, uh, since we can observe a very large uh, scale uh, uh, in remote sensing image uh, in the real world. So uh, due to this uh, uh, difficulties, uh, so that means, um, uh, I mean, for the people maybe uh, who are very interested and in, uh, uh, in in uh, in the uh, traditional uh, computer regions, uh, so uh, they are uh, they are hardly to uh, to do more uh, experiments or do the research in the remote sensing uh, field. Uh, and uh, and also I think uh, 
uh, for the deep learning stuff, uh, we can use it, uh, I mean, uh, uh, due to its uh, very powerful uh, learning ability, uh, we can use it to analyze the remote sensing uh, uh, data. Uh, um, but I think uh, for now, the main challenges for remote sensing uh, uh, data analysis, maybe in the, uh, as I told, uh, uh, as I said, so maybe in the, uh, the uh, availability of the remote sensing data and also the labeling uh, for for that images. Um, yes, yeah, uh, since uh, in our institute now uh, we can we can download some uh, uh, remote sensing images and uh, and uh, we can we can do some um, uh, uh, corporations and uh, to to get uh, this uh, their data available and also. Uh, we we would like to share some uh, some benchmark data for remote sensing images. Uh, yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have some uh, questions from from the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your talk. Um, the first question is: Will your slides be available? Uh, Can you which one? Write the slides of this talk. Uh, start. So, uh, which page? Uh, uh, Doctor Dunfen, could, could you hear us? Uh, it's uh, the voice is a little bit. Um, could, I mean, could you yeah, share not... your slides after the the presentation, after the talk? Yeah. I still yeah. share my, which one? Yeah, share with us in the conference, the, the slides could you after the conference? Is this available? Yeah, I still share my screen, so. so. No, 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 I, I mean the, the slides, the complete set of slides after the, the conference. Ah, ah, okay, yes, yes, sure, sure. Uh, since okay, um, yeah, since uh, since this uh, video is open, I mean open to the YouTube, I think. But uh, also for this slide, yeah, you can contact me and I will share it. Or yeah, I can, uh, I can send it to the mm, okay. to to the conference. It's fine. Yeah. Super. That's excellent. The other thing is about automatic data labeling. What's your, have you had any experience in that area? You said that labeling is, is really a challenge now. Uh, human labeling is very difficult. Researchers have been uh, working in, diff in different areas in automatic data labeling. And uh, what's your feeling and your experience in that area? Uh, yes. Well, since you were, uh, your voice is not so clear to me, but uh, but uh, uh, I think it's maybe it's about uh, uh, how to labeling uh, maybe in the uh, in the different uh, areas by by, uh, by different people. I, I I'm not sure I can uh, what I can understand and your questions is right on or not. Okay. Uh, hmm? Hello. Uh, more questions. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, but we, uh, in remote sensing image, we usually have uh, various different scenarios in the same image. Uh, one is domain adaptation side the image or cross images in this case. Or do you have any other suggestions? How do you deal with the heterogeneity of the remote sensing images? Nowadays, for example. Uh, sorry, the the voice is uh yeah I I can yeah I can hear that so clearly. I'm, yep, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, um, the question is about the heterogeneity of uh, remote sensing data, and uh, if you have already uh, some work related to domain adaptation. Mm. 
Uh, yes, yes. Actually, uh, uh, now we are working at the domain adaptation for, uh, for example, for segmentation across uh, the different cities or different regions. And uh, we also uh, prepared uh, some uh, benchmark uh, uh, data sets for, uh, for this topic. Uh, but that work is still, um, yeah, it's still um, under um, uh, preparation uh, since uh, we uh, we spent a lot of time uh, for that uh, that remote sensing uh, data pre uh, pre processing. Uh, but if uh, but if you are interested in in in, uh, in this topic, and I mean the, uh, to using uh, some domain adaptation stuff uh, for um, for this, uh, for example, the cross uh, region or cross city uh, classification or uh, or segmentation, uh, I, uh, you are uh, you are very welcome to uh, to make uh, connections with us. Uh, maybe we can share some uh, data or techniques, and also we can. Uh, make some uh, great uh, uh, discussions. Yeah, that this about the, the, this topic, the adaptation. I I don't know. I feel we have no silver bullet for this problem, and uh, I see that the, in the literature maybe we can address this problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Each application by application. I mean. Uh, it, it's very difficult to 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 do that. Uh, if uh, uh, if I need some methodology to do that, uh, what do you recommend? How can we start? Uh, yeah, for our work, we just use uh, a, a very simple stuff. Uh, I mean the uh, the GAN the GAN net, uh, the generation adversary network. Uh, uh to um to to uh to bring to the gap uh, between the uh, source uh, source domain and the target domain uh what i mean is uh, uh try to use uh, the gannet um uh, to make connection between the uh, the different cities or different uh, uh reasons uh, using uh, i mean uh, of the remote sensing images um, maybe this is a very uh a very simple uh, idea to uh, to do that, uh, and uh, now maybe you can use some uh, like the domain uh, generalization techniques, and that is a very uh, a very hot uh, topic uh, recently uh, to do um, to deal with uh, issues of the domain adaptation. Yeah. More questions? No. So. Thank you very much, Professor Dunfang. And uh, so let's. Uh... Yeah, OK. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, thank you again. Uh, I believe we can close the session. Thank you for attending this, this uh, talk. So see you after the lunch. Bye bye. OK. Bye. Thank see you, you. Professor Dunfang. So ah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yep. thank you. Uh, after I, I will send you a, a message to if you could send us your your slides. Yeah, yeah, yes. And, uh, it will be very nice. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. So keep in touch by by email. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.